In this video, I will be using the same example as the one I used in my video on differential files. So here's a link to the differential file video. So, but now let's look at logging. So how does it work in logging? Here we also have a first edition of that book and we also keep a list of changes we want to apply. So let's assume we apply a change like this one, we correct the spelling error. So what's the difference to differential files? The difference is here, all the changes are also immediately applied to the addition. So every single change we apply, we not only collect that in this change list, but we directly apply it here on the left side, which used to be the read-only version. So this is an important difference to differential files. This is read-write. We can change this and we will change it. So if you stick to the book example, this would mean that for each and every change we apply, we also issue a new edition of the book, which of course would be way too expensive for a publishing house. But basically that is what logging would do. So for every single change, we come up with a new edition. Every typo creates a new edition of the book. So it's not only that we have those major editions, we also have minor editions here, that's a 2.1st edition of the book and so forth. So every change triggers a new edition of the book. So that is what logging is about. You collect it in a list of changes, but you also apply it. So when we look at specific algorithms later on, we will learn that it is often required that you first write it to the change list and then you apply it here to this edition. This is also called write ahead logging. Right ahead logging. It's not an absolute requirement for all methods, but for many of them. We will get back to that. So in logging, the idea is you have a current edition and this is read and write, and you collect the changes in a log file. There are many, many options on how to organize the log file. You can do physical logging, logical logging. We will look at that, don't worry. For the moment, the high level idea is you have a list of changes you collect. And this is typically an example of redundancy. So you have the changes here collected in the log file and you have the changes applied here in this current edition. This means this is yet another example of the data redundancy pattern. You have redundancy. Logging helps in situations for, where you lose one of the things. So if you lose the current edition, sometimes you can go back to the current edition with the help of the log file or vice versa. It may even be the case that if you lose a log file, if you still have the current edition, you have all the data available. So this is again another example of the data redundancy pattern. And this is again also an example of the all levels are equal pattern because logging can be applied at many, many levels. So of course, typically you do that in a database. So this is often, we see it that this is a database and this is called the log file or the journal. File systems call this a journal, but it's the same idea. But you can also apply this method inside a single page, inside a single 4K page of my memory. This is interesting, for example, for solid state disks. They do that to cope with uh, expensive write operations. So what are the advantages of logging? Again, as differential files, it may be applied at almost any level, be it entire databases, files, indexes, be it disk or memory, tables, blocks, pages, rows. It's the same as in differential files, the same advantages. You have fast sequential write to the log. That's usually something you want to exploit in a database system. So if you go back, of course, you also apply the changes here, but usually how this operates is you force the changes to disk here in the log file, and this is done by sequential write. Here on the left side, you can do that later. So whenever time allows you to write it down, you don't have to force the changes down to disk. And therefore, this is also a method to speed up a databases. As long as you collect, as long as you force the data here into the log file, it's fine. This is very important. Usually you organize the log in a sequential manner. 
you don't have to, but that's typically what you do. If it is organized sequentially, you, you can write down the changes sequentially and then you have sequential I.O., which is way faster than random I.O. So if you look back at this example again, here we write sequentially, this is sequential I.O. Here we typically have to load old pages, old blocks randomly, apply the changes and write them back randomly. So here you typically have random I.O., which is much slower than sequential I.O. And in logging, what typically happens is as long as you force all the changes into the log file, it's fine. It's totally okay. You don't have to wait till the changes were applied here to the read-write file. You can do that later at any point in time. The log is the ultimate point of truth. And as a sequential write to the log is so much faster, this is a method for speeding up write operations in a database system. This is very important. So it's not only the redundancy, it's also the performance that, that we gain here. So we have sequential, fast sequential writes, and yet we have cheap reads. Why do we have cheap reads? Well, in contrast to differential files, we don't have to look at the read-only file and the differential file. Here we simply look at the read-write file on the left. It contains all the truths, usually. So we, we simply do look at the file on the left. Why is that enough? Well, as I just explained it, I said, well, as long as you force changes to the log, it's fine. You don't have to apply it here. But uh, usually the situation is a little bit more complex. So even though you only write it to the log, you still apply the changes typically in main memory to the pages, which means you have a new edition of this database. A current edition sits in main memory. Maybe we draw it here. So main memory has a current edition. And on hard disk, it's slightly out of date. So this is a little old. So what happens in logging typically is that whenever you change something, you write it to the log, you apply it to the version in main memory, and eventually later you push it to disk. But this still means whenever a query comes in, you can go to this current edition in main memory to compute the result to that query. That's just fine. You don't have to go here to disk. You have the current edition of that data in main memory. Typically, you don't, you don't have to do it like that, but typically that is how a database operates. So you only have to ask one of the structures. You have cheap reads. No read of the log is required. The log also corresponds to an incremental backup. This is important for archiving if you want to have an extra copy in case you lose the server for whatever reason. That's important. And there's also log shipping that is enabled by that. Log shipping is important for parallel databases to distribute changes in the cluster. We will also look at that in a different video. Data redundancy here, as I said above, is important. So if you lose either the read-write file or the log, you can recover, depending on the situation. But basically, redundancy allows you to recover if you lose parts of the data. So as I said, the truth, what is the current version? That's another word for that. So what I mean by that is current version. So if you really force all the changes into the read-write file on the left side, then this contains the truth. That might be the truth. Or maybe it's a combination of this read-write file on disk, as explained above, which is slightly out of date, plus the pages you have in my memory. That might be the truth. Or alternatively, you just look at the log. You simply ignore what's going on on the left, as the log contains all the changes. Another way of viewing that is to say the log is a database. If you never throw away any information from the log, if you never prune the log, if you keep the log at all times, which of course is infeasible in practice, actually you could say the log is a database. Yes, of course, this is not efficient to search the log in order to answer queries, but in principle, all the information that was ever inserted, updated, deleted to or from the database is contained in the log. So the log is a database in a way. 
drawbacks of logging are there's additional storage space and then it depends on the organization of the log. There are many different ways how to store the log information and, and how we store the log has huge impact on the storage space requirements. There's still random write I.O. That's an important difference to differential files. In differential files we created a new version by merging the old edition of the read-only file with a differential file. I explained that in my previous video in detail. So here we still apply all the changes to the left side. Of course there are clever ways for optimizing that. Of course there's a database buffer in between. We don't have to force all the changes to the read-write file immediately. That wouldn't make too much sense. But in principle there's a lot of random I.O. going on. The log may become pretty large actually. We have to think of ways on how to shorten the log. And those techniques are called pruning techniques, log pruning. You have to prune the log, that's very important. So to summarize, what are the differences of differential files and logging? So the, the main idea of both is really the same. Given the file X, you collect changes to X in a separate structure Y. So there's no difference among the two methods. There's a huge difference with respect to this main file X. In differential files, this is read only. You can't write to that. In logging, you are allowed to write to that file. A new edition is created, a new edition X prime, by combining the old edition plus a differential file. That is what differential files is about. So we have these merges going on which take the old edition plus a differential file and merge them into a new edition. In logging it's different in the sense that we take the old edition X but we apply the changes immediately. So the changes are applied one by one to that current edition. And what is the truth? So which means the current version of the file. Well in differential files this is X plus multiple differential files. I explained that in my previous video already. When you merge differential files there may be two differential files at the time and there may be two read-only files at the, and there may be two X's at the time. So one read-only X, the old version and the X prime that's currently being created. In logging the truth can be obtained by either looking at X or the log. X is a current version, the up-to-date version, assuming that all changes were actually applied to that version, or you look at the log. So this works if the log wasn't pruned. Then you have the choice to look at either side. I would like to show another example that explains the differences of these two methods and that can be understood by combining the two methods. So what you could do is when you look back at logging, this is only logging, what I'm depicting here, so we have our current edition, we have the log file, but actually if this is a black box, whatever we use inside doesn't have to be exposed to the outside. So in principle this read-write file can be implemented by using a differential file. So inside this read-write file we could use a read-only file again plus a read-write differential file, which means if we now apply a change in this structure, the change would be collected here and it would be applied here. But here we would apply it by collecting it in the structure. That is how change would be applied. On the other hand, if you have a read operation, how do we perform a read operation? Well, we look at the current edition. The current edition is up to date. On the outside, we said it's logging. So here we have the current version. But inside, of course, we would then have to consider both structures, combine information from both structures to get back to the current edition. So bottom line, as with, with many methods in computer science and especially data management, you can combine them. So differential files and logging are very similar, yes. But they also have a different purpose. So usually differential files is used to speed up write operations, especially in situations where you have many, many write operations. Logging is typically used 
in order to be able to recover some data, in order to be able to get back to an old consistent version of the data. So in a way, those methods have different purposes, but on a, from, from a high level, they're very, very similar.